Hey, it sold out in six cities before landing here in Chicago, and the new Titanic exhibit at Old Orchard Mall in Skokie is proving to be just as popular here. Yeah, I got a chance to explore the exhibit with its creative director, Mark Locke, who not only curated an amazing immersive experience with hundreds of artifacts and stories, he also shared his own story of diving to the wreckage to see the historic site himself. Since you actually made it down to the wreckage yeah. of the Titanic, we're looking at the Grand Staircase here. Did you get to see that when you were down there? No, the Grand Staircase is inside the bow section of the ship. Okay. Now we could look down and past the glass dome that's no longer there yeah. and look down into the ship, but this part of the Grand Staircase was farther down into the ship. How does it feel having been there and, and the emotional experience that was to recreate this for people. There's a sense of responsibility, certainly excitement when I was able to dive the ship, but also a very emotional connection to the ship, and I hope that's what we brought to this exhibition. It's a, a human story above all. And as I watch people walk through the exhibition, that connection starts to happen, I think. It starts out, hey, we're going to an exhibit, but then that emotional gravity and looking at the people you love, the people that surround you, Life is so fragile, and the story of Titanic really tells that story. In fact, if the Titanic would have hit the iceberg straight on, rather than trying to avoid it and scraping, it probably wouldn't have sunk. Those watertight doors that were meant to keep it afloat would have worked. But of course, perfect storm, if you will, scraped along the side of the iceberg, watertight compartments were breached, and the ship inevitably, as uh, Thomas Andrews, the designer of the ship, he said, it's, it's a mathematical certainty that this ship will sink. How has so many things survived underwater? In some ways, it's kind of a perfect environment. Okay. In fact, when I was out on the wreck site, when we'd bring something up that was leather, right? A mm -hmm. suitcase, a wallet, a purse. It was exciting because we knew the things that were inside were most likely preserved. Turns out the tanning process in leather, the chemicals used, yeah. will repel the microorganisms that eat away at paper. So when things were opened up like suitcases, there were still postcards and love letters and documents as if they were placed there yesterday. So tell me about what people are going to see when they come here. How much of it is recreation, like the staircase yep. behind us? How much is actual artifacts from it's the floor? A yeah, a mixture of both, artifacts and recreations. We want you to feel like you're there. We want you to feel like you're boarding the ship. You get a boarding pass when you walk it's into genius. the exhibition. Yeah. You relate to a passenger on board, the class they traveled in, a little bit about them. You don't know their fate yet. That's told to you later on. But then you, you, you see where the ship was built in Belfast. You board the ship and walk down a first class hallway. You walk past a, a first class parlor suite. In that area you'll see this incredible collection, over 300 artifacts. And then you go on your journey into the Grand Staircase, down a third class corridor, uh, into the boiler room where the men knew that there was a problem right away because they were shoveling coal and the water started to rush in. Out on the beautiful promenade deck where so many people thought everything's fine, the ship was sinking, lifeboats were going out half full. Then you come face to face with the iceberg, and that's, a, I think, an incredible gallery. You really, you, you know, of course, the, the end of the story as the, as the visitor, but there's a lot more to tell, I think, different layers. And then we also talk about what it's like to dive the ship. There's a gallery at the end of the exhibit that talks about diving those two and a half miles and recovering artifacts today. I think it's the perfect human story. You say Titanic anywhere in the world, people get it. Yeah. They know the story. Some think Jack and Rose, but most think about this, this real true story of bravado, of confidence in technology, and we know that we learn that story over and over again throughout history. So I think that's why people connect so strongly. In this exhibit, that's what's so exciting. The largest square footage we've ever done, the most artifacts we've ever done, uh, a journey that we're obviously very excited and proud of. And it's such a story It's uh, that people remember the show when it was here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. They're coming back, this time they're bringing their children, mm -hmm. and in some cases their grandchildren, yeah. because it was so impactful those many years ago. 
So the exhibit is slated to run through spring, but will likely be extended, but we don't know for how long, just mm -hmm. due to its popularity. And mm -hmm. it's so neat, you get on board and you get a ticket and you're a passenger and you go through the entire exhibit and it's not till the end you know whether or not yeah. you survived or not. Wow. It's such a cool setup the way they yeah. did it. Very that whole fascinating. story is so very interesting. And you were also telling us that we haven't even skimmed the surface it's, of how much stuff is still down there because it's a whole big legal battle. Yeah, there's a lot of red tape because it's also a burial ground for yes. hundreds and hundreds of people. So what they have been able to recover is the half a mile uh, field of debris in between the two sections of the mm. ship that sank. So they haven't gone into the actual ship itself yet. Oh, wow. And I don't know if they will. Ever they will. Hopefully, yeah. but who knows? Man. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Isn't so crazy? much. Okay. Yeah. You got to check that out. Mm -hmm.